Okay, now it's time to talk a little bit about uh, atomic spectra and atomic energy states as we continue along uh, with our quantum and nuclear physics topic here. So the very first thing in the curriculum, at least for the IB, is uh, to talk about emission and absorption spectra. A lot of students, uh, I think, have trouble understanding what's the difference between them. So I thought this uh, diagram right here might help. Uh, if we were looking at uh, regular light, so any old light, so to speak, uh, we would expect that you know, if we could take the light and then break it up into different uh, components. See, this light right here, by the way, would look white right now. And that's because our eye detectors get a little bit confused and we see all the different wavelengths, so we think it looks white. However, if you could use some sort of prism or some sort of, uh, you know, yeah, let's say we'll call it a prism, but a prism can be lots of different things. But a prism could be anything here that can, that can split up the light into its different wavelengths. Okay, so you could use, for example, a little crystal. You might have seen white light, where, you know, if light goes through a crystal here, it makes this pretty looking uh, rainbow sort of color. Now this is a really creepy looking sort of disjointed eye, but this is supposed to be what you would see, so to speak. So if you take white light, put it through a prism, we would expect to see a continuum spectrum, which means all the different colors. So what would be on the uh, x-axis in this case right here? On the x-axis would be, uh, well, this would be different colors, so it's probably wavelength. However, keep in mind that over here we're doing something like, you know, 400 nanometers. And over here this looks like, you know, around, uh, I don't know, let's say 600 nanometers, something like that. Obviously it could be a little bit more, a little bit less here, but uh, this tells us it's blue, this tells us it's red. Normally we would see these scales uh, reversed, in other words, 400 would be on the left. But oh well, it doesn't really matter. So if you look at this uh, wavelength here, the important thing is what happens though if we have a gas or some sort of element being heated up. So for example, this could be uh, some sort of gas that you heat up. And this gas has, is made up of certain uh, elements and each element, when you heat it up, has certain specific characteristic lines that it makes. So in other words, if you put this hot gas directly through this prism to split up its light, you wouldn't see the continuum spectrum. You'd only see these, these very specific bands. Now this is the important thing to remember, is that each different element has its own characteristic uh, band structure. In other words, maybe it has, maybe it looks like this, or maybe it only has one or two really bright ones right in the middle. Uh, so it can be lots of different things. But let's say this hot gas here, so we heat it up, and that's why it's actually emitting. That's why we call it emission line spectrum. You can spot an emission line spectrum because everything else is black and it's only emitting light at these very specific frequencies or wavelengths, we could say. Remember that uh, frequency and wavelength are related according to this wave equation we've talked about lots of times. So V equals F lambda. By the way, if you're looking at light, of course, it's C equals F lambda because the speed of light is C. So you can see that, uh, oh, pardon the pun, but you can see that uh, if we have wavelength, we can convert to frequency and so on. So let's take this same hot gas uh, let's assume it's it's the same exact gas, but this time it's no longer hot. So you're not zapping it or exciting it or anything. You've just got it cold. So that would be the example here for a cold gas. Now behind it, you have to give it lots of light. So imagine you've got your sort of regular white light bulb here. So this light bulb wants to give off the continuum spectrum. See, it's got all the different colors there. But what this cold gas does, now it, let's assume it's the exact same gas as the hot gas. So what the cold gas will do is, rather than emit these specific lines, it will actually absorb these lines. So it's almost like it eats them up. So if you look with a light with cold gas, again through your prism, into your creepy looking eye, then you have the exact same placement of these different key features from our emission line. Only this time, we're going to see all the colors behind it. See all the colors, the red all the way to the blue came from the white light. However, the parts that are missing are what the gas did. So hopefully you can see the importance of this, that by looking at a, uh, a gas, whether it's a hot gas or a cold gas, it'll still do the same things at the same wavelengths or frequencies. Okay, so we can actually spot different things. So everything has its own sort of uh, footprint, as it were, or fingerprint, I guess. So the next thing to talk about is atomic spectra and energy states is emission and absorption spectra and how these are evidence of quantization of energy in atoms. So what I want to do is show you something with uh, what we call energy levels. So let's just say this right here now would be an energy level 
diagram is what it's often called. And if we look at an energy level diagram, maybe I'll put things in electron volts instead. So here on this scale, the x uh, doesn't really matter. Okay, so we don't really care about what the x is. But over here, this is going to be called n equals 1. And we often call this the ground state. I'll explain what I mean by this in a second. So this right here, let's just say we give it a value of, uh, normally it's minus 13.6 EV. And then uh, way up at the top right here, this will be zero. So this right here will be kind of N equals infinity. So this will be like a really high uh, number here. And then we might have uh, other things. So I'm actually drawing for you, for example, um, what it is for hydrogen. So for a hydrogen atom, uh, let's see here, this would be minus 3.4, for example, would be N equals two. And we have another one at n equals 3. And we have lots of different n values, by the way. Uh, so this here could be minus 1.5. Now some people, first of all, ask, why is it that these numbers are negative? Okay, so why is the lowest one negative? This has something to do with uh, the concept of potential energy. I don't know if you remember this, but at infinitely far away, so what this here represents, uh, just to explain a little bit clearer, this, ex this is uh, the different energy states or the different uh, energy levels that the electrons in this atom are allowed to occupy. So this diagram over here shows it maybe a little bit easier to understand. Imagine this is the center of your uh, hydrogen atom. Then you can have these different orbits, so to speak. In other words, hydrogen has one electron orbiting around it. And maybe it's around this orbit, or maybe it's around this one, or the next one, or the next one, or the next one. So as n increases, you're going farther away from the center. So obviously, n equals 1 is probably the, that's this closest one. So we call that the ground state, the closest one. Now, if you remember your definitions from work, work is actually defined as being zero when you're infinitely far away. And when we talk about potential energy, when you're really close, well, the potential energy is uh, low. And as you go, uh, sorry, it's high. And as you go further away, it's supposed to get lower. Now, the problem is, though, that you're supposed to uh, have a value at zero at infinity. So that means if you're zero and you're supposed to be uh, decreasing, so to speak, well, this makes this have to happen. So you go from zero and the lowest one is actually a minus. It's just a convention. Don't get too confused by the minus there. Just don't worry about it. Just take a look. Now, if you look at this, what's important is that let's say an electron is in a certain energy level. Let's say it's, uh, let's say it's sitting here at n equals two. And let's say that it goes down in energy level. Whenever it goes down in energy level, it will actually emit a photon. And this photon has precisely the energy that we were looking at before, E equals HF. And by the way, it can also go up. So this here would be called emission, by the way. If it goes down, it emits a photon. However, if it's absorbed, this would be maybe it goes from the ground state and maybe it gets excited. So maybe this electron is excited. It absorbs some energy, so to speak. So that means, you know, maybe it absorbed a photon. So maybe a photon came into this uh, atom right here and it goes up in energy level. So it's all about exciting uh, uh, electrons to an excited energy level. Um, you can do that by zapping them or by shooting photons at them. They go up in a higher energy level and eventually they actually go back down in energy level. When they go back down, they emit photons of this exact energy. So why is this feature right here, uh, why does that actually tell us that quantization of energy? Uh, well, we can talk about that. Um, I would say actually that because, maybe I'll write it down. So because we only see a certain emission absorption line. That means only certain energy levels allowed. That's really why. Okay, so it's really important to understand this. That because we only see certain emission lines, you know these lines right here? Because we only see certain ones of those, that tells us that they can only be in certain energy levels. And certain energy levels tells us that they're quantized. 